log 6, 0 dark 30, 2015, 9 April, maybe 10th. My lord, what fun we have. Let's see. I followed the dreams to what works out as west. At least what works out as west here. Wasn't positive what I'd find. To say it was bizarre is an understatement. Charlie Foxtrot is what it was. I had thought the dreams were helping. I had thought they were guiding. I should have remembered the fingers. <sighs> Whatever they're doing to me, it's far worse than Project Redacted. Dr. Carl Tum. I should have remembered the fingers stretching, pulling, tying up and tearing out. I digress. Charlie Foxtrot, this situation is FUBAR. Major FUBAR. The Bopsy twins are asleep. They're cuddled together like two puppies. Sarah's curled into a fetal position at the fob. McCoy, I'm going to have to apologize to him, even though he did fall asleep on guard duty. He's asleep next to the wall of the bean and bullet room. I just wish I redacted. I looked at the recording of the redacted room. I hope you only sent nine. The Meg, he put two of them in the floor at least. They will definitely be late to the party. I suppose that that man-eater air bear is the one you sent to deal with me. At least according to the dreams. The poor bastard was on the highest rotation. He must have fell a meter and a half. I'll have to ask McCoy when he wakes up, but I think he's got a compound comma tumor fracture of his left femur. I'll send the surveillance videos right now. They happen to be stuck in room two. Somehow the five of them got through the hallway. Or maybe more. I don't know. But I'll deal with that later. They will be encoded with the redacted, also redacted, and this log. So at half a click, uh, where I thought I would find something, you know what? I did. It was a hard target wall, about 30 feet tall at least. And when you know it, there was some kind of doorway right in front of me. I don't know, maybe archway is a better term. At about 10 feet tall, it looked like a narrow bottom triangle that was inverted. So the tip ended somewhere in the ground. It's something about this place. I can't exactly remember how I got there. Something about the dreams. No. To the right of the doorway, under dirt that looked like it'd been there since the dinosaurs had roamed the earth, was my brother's cover. I picked it up, looked it over. It had a stupid cartoon skeleton on it, and on the inside was all his info. Strange thing was, it was torn and faded. Now, I know I'm no expert, but it looked age a lot like age, rather than say damage. Every spec ops he ever did, he got a new cover. And he was only supposed to have been here a month. Hell, I had even seen him out for Christ's sake. But now he's gone Elvis and redacted. And off he went. I wasn't cleared to get his communiques, but you hear stuff. I guess that's why I volunteered for this damn Oscar Mike mission. 
he took his hat with me. So as I was saying, I went through this or archway, found a room there. I know Jones is going to want to look at it, probably bright also. Strangely enough, I looked down to find the echo map in my hand. Apparently I had only just turned it on when I got here because there was no route back. It had a lot of difficulty trying to read the carvings on the wall. Hell, I even had difficulty looking at them. Something about them gave me a hell of a headache. It was like that mission to Redacted. That damn four-point jump I took in the following ambush. Having the hump out of there with my brain case broke. Nah. Nah. Well, now that I think about it, this is definitely somehow worse. Only good thing about it is it seems to push back the dreams. Who knew I'd be grateful for a headache? I was trying to report on the carvings. They look a lot like they were maybe cuneiform, like the ones that we found in that base in the sandbox of Iraq. Fob redacted and project redacted. Peter was on that mission. He had let his little brother tag along. Here I am again, tagging along. There were also these very weird shapes of some kind. It was odd. I could feel the rock under my fingertips that the shapes were carved out of. You know, but somehow I couldn't wrap my mind around them like they were four-dimensional or something. They seemed to come out of the walls. And the walls felt smooth. They were a lot like the dreams in that regard. I know what I'm saying probably doesn't make a lick of sense. But it's like everything else. It's just foobar. I knew I had to get out of the room. I had a redacted. And that's when I saw it. The fog had cleared. And now the wall next to the door, it had some writing on it in camo paint. It was my brother's call sign. As we had done when we were kids, I followed the script below and left. The room to the outside. I went ten paces out and twenty to the right. There I found a hard ball surface, much narrower than the boulevard. The first building that I came to was on the left. It was one of those squat little dog houses I told you about on the boulevard. Inside was just a bunch of bags of dick and a handful of other MREs. Peter could never stand those damn beans and franks. I also found a note. I plan to close it word for word as redacted. In case it doesn't get through, the gist of it is something went wrong with my brother's unit. Horribly wrong. The note states that his squad and the eggheads were gone and he was a one-man show. Oddly, he also mentioned his father. Actually, correction, our father, who art in Arlington, self-inflicted victim of the Vietnam War. My brother had said he met the others here in a dream. Who they are, I'm unsure. But he went on to say that our dad was trying to lead him somewhere to protect them, to keep them safe. The short answer is something about this place drove him mad. I mean, completely sack of hammers. He mentioned bad dreams, dreams that called, crawled inside his brain pulling and tearing. Anyway, I had humped it back to camp after reading the letter a couple of times. I could find no side of what he was going on about, 
but I'm going to go back to the area and check it out tomorrow after I confer with McCoy and get his input. I can only hope that none of the remaining crew or myself succumb to dreams like these, for whatever they are, they surely claimed my brother. I just hope none of our current group of survivors gets these damn dreams. I'm going to get some sack time. There doesn't seem to be any real threat here. Don't worry, I'll sleep with one eye open. At least until Marcus, Ramirez, and Blaskowski get back from patrol. I'm going to have to remember to see if they've been dreaming. Here's hoping I don't have any. Oscar, Mike, till next report. I'll set my alarm to 0800. Here's hoping I don't have any dreams. End log.